Good morning. Let's just enter into the presence of the Lord for He is great and He is worthy of praise. We are worshiping the only true living God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the Most High God, the creator of the universe. Bless His holy name. The, the son that was born, the son that was given, the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ who manifests in the flesh, the God who manifests in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world and was received up into glory, and he has poured out his Holy Spirit on those who believe on him. And he is here. The Bible says, Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's Colossians 1 and 27. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's enter in the only true living God's presence. Glory to God, the one who got up, the one who defeated death, hell, and the grave, who manifests in the flesh is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, as the Son of God, the only one that got up out of the grave, out of the tomb. Hallelujah. He is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. If you have not unwrapped your, your gift of praying in the Holy Spirit, then you just sing along with praising Him and thanking Him for His goodness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I welcome you. Yes, just welcoming his presence changes the atmosphere, shifts the vibration to praise hallelujah hallelujah that's that's how you shift the atmosphere that's how the vibration is rise glory to god praising god hallelujah hallelujah blessings bless your name father and the day you saw, I welcome you. I welcome you. Welcome him in your presence. In the day you saw, Yabashai. Yadabasun, that it is Sarabakaya, Konda, that it is Sarabakun, that it is We invite you to pray for us, Holy Spirit. When we know not what we should pray as we are, the Holy Spirit makes intercessions for us. Amen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. God is faithful and he is worthy of all praise. So the topic that God is giving me today, and he has... Um, Spoken this word many a times because this word is everything. This word, um, to meditate on this is everything. Everything that you receive from God, you have to receive through faith. And not you mustering up your faith, but really resting in the faith of the Son of God. The faith of the Son of God. Jesus fulfilled all the law on the cross. He was crucified. In our place, on that cross, he suffered, he died for our sin. In our place, he never sinned, so he took our sin upon himself. And he suffered on that cross, he nailed our sins to the cross, and he died, the punishment, the wrath of God was on him. That we might be um, reconciled to Father God so that we can have fellowship with him. And on the third day, he was risen from the dead. He laid down his life because he had the power to pick it up. Glory to God. And yes... He rose from the dead and he went about still preaching. And those who were separated, even in death, they heard the gospel too and was risen. So this is the truth, you guys. This is the truth. There is no other truth. This is the only truth, the life and the way. 
he got up. And if you believe on anything else other than Yeshua HaMashiach, the Christ, that is not going to work out for you. That's not going to work out for you in everlasting life, okay? Everlasting life can only come from Christ. And the punishment for our sins was paid through his precious blood. Now, God says there is no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of the blood and receiving the blood of Jesus Christ. So, Jesus shed his blood. So, now you receive it as a free gift that you've been made right with Father God through his only begotten Son, which is God manifest in the flesh. His blood made you clean. So, that's how you receive it. And so, you enter into this. You receive this. This is already done. It's finished. So, you receive it just like that. And believing on him is the work that Father God is satisfied with. Believing on him. Okay? So, 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 tells us, Of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us, Wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So our position is settled forever. In Christ Jesus, you receive him, which is the wisdom of God, which is the righteousness of God, which is the sanctification that is necessary for you to uh, be reconciled to Father God, to receive his righteousness. And you walk in this and you receive this every single day. As you come to God, he washes you in the water of his word, continuously praising him and worshiping him. And the Holy Spirit is here to usher us into the presence of the Lord so that we can have that intimate relationship with Father God. And so that's why you understand that Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, says the secret and the mystery of godliness is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And also that God works in us to will and to do his good pleasure. When you understand that God is working in you to will and to do his good pleasure, which you, when you understand that you are sealed with his Holy Spirit, when you understand that the word bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and that we're able to call him Abba, meaning Father, when you understand that according to Galatians 4 and 6 that the Holy Spirit is poured out into your heart and that Holy Spirit cries out to Father God calling him Abba and therefore you can understand that salvation is a free gift. It's a free gift and you receive it. And you rest in that. And when you get into the word of God, when you read the holy scriptures, then you will understand the heart of God, so to speak. You'll begin to see the things that he likes, see the things that he dislikes. You'll begin to see his word as it is. It's a mirror to show you your need for him. And there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. But the word of God will show you your need for him, will show you... Um, how we failed and how we 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 failed after adam and eve um sin that's what happened and because jesus loved us so much god manifested in the flesh to take on the punishment that separated us from god so that we can be um reconciled to him the actual wrath of god was poured out on him for our sin Glory to God, when you meditate on that, then you understand where the righteousness is coming from. Okay? 2 Corinthians 5, 21, He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that, what, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Having right standing with him, he made him be the sin. So now since you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you ask him into your heart and you ask him to cleanse you from your sin, you receive what he did on the cross was for you in your place. You receive his righteousness and you thank him for taking on your sin. And now it is him who lives in you. You're crucified. I am crucified in Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I. The life which I now live in this body, I live by the faith of the son of God. So we are always in one, one with him. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So we're one with him. Okay. So he is our righteousness. And so 
going from faith to faith and glory to glory is resting in the righteousness of God. Of course, uh, reading the word of God and studying the word of God so that you'll know Father God's ways. And during this time of studying and meditating on the word of God and worshiping him and praising him, um, you will continuously uh, um, go from faith to faith to glory to glory. And he will continuously reveal himself to you. And therefore, um, the righteousness requirement is already met. As we just meditated on 1 Corinthians 1 and 30, of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for his wisdom from God and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. And as you continue to meditate on the word, as you continue to pray and worship, it begins to be an awesome love affair, okay, with Father. Okay, it's a, it's, it's love. It's a love. It's because you love. You've been the He's poured that love in your heart, and now you have this love relationship with Him, which is awesome. And it's an intimate relationship. There's nothing like it. Glory to God. It's just, just being so thankful to being a child of the living God. Now Galatians uh, three six and seven say, just as Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And we've been brought in through Christ because, yes, now we are children of God. And we also receive the blessing that was spoke over Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all were blessed. Abraham Abraham uh, was a man of God and um, stood um, believing God and God gave him grace to do that so now we have this grace just as Abraham uh, was blessed now we have the blessing of Abraham because Jesus brought us into this rest hallelujah so Romans 4 and 5 tells us to him who does not work but believes on him just as Abraham believed on him then your faith is accounted righteousness Okay, for righteousness, because you believe on him, because you always are believing on the righteous one, which is Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. You're always believing on him. You don't switch up and start trying to um, come up with some of this, you know, condemnation teaching, um, um, this, you know, this mixture of law and grace. Um, Jesus fulfilled all the law, and now you rest in um Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with it. He came to fulfill it. And so now you rest in Christ inside of you, Christ, the righteousness of God. And now uh, God, the fullness of God is in Christ and Christ is in you. The Holy Spirit quickens your mortal body. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead quickens your mortal body. And now the Christ inside of you. God will continuously uh, work his will. All things will work together for the good to them who love God and are called according to his good purpose. You read the word of God so you'll know know the word of God. And um, and you will be known by your fruit because your, your fruit will not be contrary to what God is saying. If your fruit is being contrary to the word of God, then we know that you need to... Um, you need to continuously seek God and you need to continuously uh, receive um, the truth and know that God is not confused. God is not mocked. Um, whatsoever you sow, that shall you reap. And thank God that the law, spirit, and life in Christ has made us free from the law, sin, and death. But you need to understand that God is not going to go against what he said in his word. And that may... That may um, offend some who try to uh, come up with their own thing you know God is not going to switch up when God says marriage is for a man and a woman he's not going to ever switch up in that because he changes not you know and people who try to uh, put their own lust desires uh, over what God says you are uh, unfortunately deceived 
you're you're deceived. I'm uh, un unfortunately you're deceived to believe that that God is with that. You you have a choice to choose whatever. Don't get me wrong. You have a choice to choose what you choose. And if you want you desire to live that out, that's your choice to live it out. But putting God's stamp of approval on it, saying that God is okay with this and God is giving you this and God blessed you with this is like really you're deceiving. And those who are really born again, who have the power of the Holy Ghost and walking according to God's grace and God working in them. And God is like that. It's not for me. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't I didn't tell you that. Where did you get that from? God is not going to go against what he has said. And so, you know, there are some who are not bold enough to tell you the truth. They just let you go on with it and you keep talking that. But truthfully, we all know that's not God, honey. That is not God. And like I said, some may not like the truth, hearing the truth, but God's word is true. God's word, he's not going to change from what he said. He's never, he says, I change not. So, like I said, if you choose to do that and that be a part of your, what you feel, your life, your choice that you made, that's your choice. But don't say God has stamped that with his approval and said that God gave you that and God bless you with that. No, mm -mm, that is not, that is lust. And that is from, um, your flesh and that and, and if you are and if you have accepted Jesus Christ and you are holding on to his name because that's what you're doing if you say I I am a Christian and I hold on to uh, Jesus you're holding on to his name but the spirit is going to bear witness with the word the Holy Spirit bear witness with the word the Holy Spirit is not bearing witness with with um what the enemy is doing and what the enemy is saying it's not going to because god is the enemy is a liar satan is a liar god is truth life the only way okay that's it and so that's that and I'm, i know that that may be hard for you to uh receive because you're really um you know you're really feeling emotions and whatever but that's not God. So stop lying on God. Okay? Just stop lying on God. And just say that you have made a decision. You want to hold on to the name of Jesus. But you made a decision to walk into something that God has said that he's not with. So you're holding on to Jesus' name. But you want to hold you want to hold on to that. And so if you hold on to Jesus' name. Uh, who am I to say that you can't hold on to Jesus' name? Because God says, whosoever call on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. But I'm telling you, if you truly want the baptism, the Holy Spirit, evidence of a renewed, regenerated life from the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit going to continuously uh, say that's not it. Continuously got you in truth to say that he didn't say that. He's going to continuously work on you and take you from faith to faith to glory to glory until you finally say, you know, um, until you finally admit it. And then if you choose still to ignore him, then I pray that you're not turned over to a reprobate mind. That's that's in the word of God. But if you read the word of God, you'll you'll see that. But then again, I'm not here to to um to condemn anyone. I'm just giving you the truth. The word of God is the truth, and God is against all sins. I'm not just picking out that sin. God deals with all of his children. And if you are a child of God, he's gonna tell you, hey, that attitude stinks. Or uh, he's gonna tell you what you did there wasn't right. He's gonna continuously guide you in truth and say, That is not for me. That's not my spirit manifesting that in your life. My spirit is going to manifest my will in your life, my righteousness in your life, okay? And he'll continuously deal with all of us being his children to let us know his will and his purpose. Okay, so again, this topic today is Jesus is our righteousness and Romans 4 and 5 to him, to him who does not work but believes on him, then his faith is counted as justified. Okay, accounted for righteousness. Okay, so that is something that you can really meditate on for the rest of the day. And this is such a good, this is such a good teaching when you study the righteousness of God. Okay, when you study the righteousness of God, you begin to really see the righteousness of God. Think about that. The righteousness of God. The right standing of God. The righteousness of God is what we receive as a gift. The righteousness of a God, the righteousness of God is not going to be contrary 
to his righteousness, okay? That is something that we need to meditate on. Well, I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you. Certainly, meditating on the Word of God day and night, having your time in the morning, having your time in the evening, studying the Word of God as it is, continuously praying in the Spirit, continuously worshiping the Lord, and also letting God manifest fruit in your life according to believing on Him, then works from the Holy Spirit will be manifest in your life, and glory to God, that is the way we go from faith to faith to glory to glory, and thanks be unto God that we have received such an awesome and wonderful gift of God's righteousness. Well, blessings to you. Again, I'll see you in the next video. And if you have not subscribed, make sure you do subscribe to Add Your Wonderful and so you will uh, be notified for the next video. And again, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, um, you can pray. What are you waiting on? Just pray and ask Father God into your heart. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I accept your sacrifice that you made on that cross. I accept that you paid for my sin. I accept that you rose from the dead. I accept that you are Lord. You were crucified. You died for my sin. And Father God raised you from the dead. I accept this. I ask you now to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, all of my sin. I ask you to live your life in me, through me, the fullness of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and filling me up with the power of your Holy Ghost, that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and living your life through me and having fruit 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 that will bring glory to your son Yeshua HaMashiach I bless your name father in Jesus name amen okay welcome to the favorite fam love you so much and blessings I'll see you in the next video